Which answer choice correctly shows the fractions in order from smallest to largest? Is it A, B, C, D, or E? So now would be a good time if you'd like to to pause the video, uh, try to figure this out, and then when you're ready, we'll go over how to do it. Okay, let's talk about this question here. So there's several ways to approach this. One would be to use your calculator and convert these numbers into decimals, and then you could rank the decimals if that's easier for you. But the lesson that I want you to see here is that when we have two fractions that have the same denominator, it's really easy to compare which one is uh, smallest versus which one is the biggest, all right? So just consider one over five versus three over five. Note that they both have fives in the denominator of the fraction. The denominator is just the bottom number in the fraction. So if the denominators match, we can just simply look at the numerators and whichever number is bigger, that whole fraction will be bigger. So for example, one over five, one is a smaller number than three. So therefore this first fraction right here would be smaller than the second fraction. All right, so if we apply that process, we will see that C is the correct answer here. So hopefully this makes sense. Martin found 16 pennies, three quarters, two dimes, and 12 nickels in an old coat pocket. How much money did he find? Is the answer A, B, C, D, or is it E? So if you'd like to, now would be a good time to pause the video, give this question a try, and then when you're ready, we'll go over how to do it. Okay, so in this question here, the first thing I want you to see is that there are 16 pennies and one penny is worth one cent. And in math, we write one cent as 0 0.01. So if I do 16 times 0 0.01, that's gonna tell me the value of the pennies. And I wanna now add that to the quarters, all right? So we have how many quarters? We have three quarters. And one quarter is worth how much? Well, one quarter is worth 25 cents. 25 cents is written like 0.25. Now, what about the dimes? Well, a dime is worth uh, 10 cents, and there are two dimes. So I would do two times 0.1 to account for the dimes. And last, we've got our nickels here. So how many nickels are there? There are 12 nickels. And I need to multiply by the value of just one nickel, and one nickel is worth five cents, so I do 0 0.05. So if you put this all in your calculator, so we get 1.71, answer choice E is the right answer here. And I wrote out a written solution, so I'm gonna put that on the screen for you if you'd like to see it. Use the number line below to answer this question. What is the distance between seven and negative five? So let's have you pause the video and now would be a good time to try this out. And if you get stuck, don't worry about it. We're, we only care about the learning right now. We don't care if you get it right or wrong. So let's have you try it. Okay, so hopefully you had a chance to try this out if you wanted to, let's talk about it. So for a number line question, here's the way I like to think about it, all right? So imagine we've got a stick figure person here and our stick figure person is gonna start at seven and they're gonna take a walk to the negative five, which is down here. So how many steps are they gonna take? Well, we go from seven to six, that's one, then two, then three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Well, that gives us the right answer, that's D. So I know this is kind of silly and goofy, but that's how I think about these questions when you've got a number line. You know, what is the distance from seven to negative five? Just imagine how many steps you would take going from seven to negative five. So I'll put the written solution that I typed out right here on the screen for you. You can pause the video, take all the time you need, and when you're ready, we'll go on to the next question. Which is correctly simplified, A, B, C, D, or E? So let me point out here, A says 300 divided by 100 equals three over one. Ignore this little squiggle out here. I, I had a typo here, so I crossed it out and I wrote three over one. So again, A should say 300 divided by 100 equals three over one. So let me give you a chance to pause the video, try to figure this out, and then when you're ready, we'll go over how to do it. Okay, so hopefully my little squiggle here didn't throw you off. I do apologize, I had a little typo here. Had to cross it out to solve it. Um, but basically, the trick that I want you to see here, let me make this bigger. In the case of 300 divided by 100, what we can see is that we've got the same number of zeros in both the top number and the bottom number. So we can actually cancel all these zeros out, which would leave us with three over one. Now for B, that's the same too. We've got 350 divided by 10. 
Note how we can cancel both the zeros out, and that leaves us with 35 over 1, which is just 35. Same with C, we've got 20 over 50. Well, look, we can cancel out the zeros. That just leaves us with 2 over 5. Now for D, it's the same thing. We don't have the same number of zeros, but we do have some we can cancel out. So note how in the denominator, there are two zeros here, and I can cancel two, two zeros out of the top number. All right, so I take the two in the bottom number, I cancel those out. I also have to then cancel two zeros from the top number out. Doing so is gonna give me 70 over six. Now, if I divide both the top and the bottom numbers by two, I get 35 over three. So E is right, all of these are correctly simplified. So I know I went over this kind of fast, so here's the written solution that I typed out for you. You can pause the video, take all the time you need with this, and when we're ready, when you're ready, we'll move on. This video's champion shout out goes to Kingwell318, who wants to share the tip to be ready to perform under pressure. It's one thing to be able to get questions right when you're relaxed. It's another thing to get the questions right when you've got the pressure of that time ticking down on the test. So just be prepared for that. So this is our champion's challenge question for this video. And by that, I mean that in my opinion, this is the hardest question in the video. So let's see how you do with this. It says a teacher accidentally lost a student's graded exam. Knowing that the class average on the test was an 88, that there were 24 students in the class, and that the sum of the points scored on the other 23 students' test was 20, 21, what was, what was the, missing, the grade on the missing test? So let's have you pause the video, try to figure this out, and if you get stuck, don't worry. There's no shame in that. It's a hard question. So let's just see how you do. Okay, so I know from covering questions like this in other videos that a lot of people are confused about this, this topic and how to do these questions. So uh, let me explain this. So the way you would calculate the average or the mean is you would add up all of the test scores and you would divide by the total number of students. Okay, so in this case, we know that the total number of students is 24. So if we were gonna calculate the mean, we would be dividing by 24. All right, and now the top part of our fraction here would be the sum of every single score on all the practice tests. So in this case, we know that for 23 of the students, all right, the, the sum of their scores was 20, 21, but we don't know what the missing student's grade was. So I'm gonna have to put a variable in for that test score. Now, a variable is just a fancy word for a letter in math that we use to represent something that we don't know. So I'm gonna call that an X. All right, so we know also fortunately that the average of the class was 88. So this is all gonna be equal to 88. Okay, so I know again, this is very confusing for some people. So just bear with me here. Let me just explain again what we did here. So if you were gonna calculate the mean, you would have to add up all of the students' test scores. Now we know that for 23 of the students, their test scores uh, were 20, 21, if you add those all up. But there's an, an extra student here and we don't know what his test score is. So that's why I made an X right here. If we knew what the number was, we would just add that to 2021. All right, and then, so if you were gonna calculate the mean, you'd have to add up all those test scores and you'd have to divide by the total number of tests. All right, so there's 24 students. That's why you put 24 down here. And they've told us that this is all equal to 88. So that's why I put 88 right here because this whole thing is equal to 88. All right, so all we have to do is solve the equation for x. In other words, what I wanna do is get x by itself on one side of our equation. So the first move I'm gonna do here, since this is all divided by 24, is I'm gonna multiply by 24 on both sides of the equation. All right, so why would I wanna do that? Well, if I multiply this by 24, my 24s are gonna cancel out. And whatever I do to one side, I also have to do it to the other side of the equation as well. So I'm also gonna have to multiply this 88 by 24. Okay, so let me rewrite this. So if I rewrite this, I'm left with 20, 21 plus X equals, supposed to be an X here, plus X equals 2,102. Why is it 2,100 and, uh, 2,112, sorry, 2,112. Because I did 88 times 24 and that gives me 2,112, that's why. 
So now I just want to get this x by itself. So since it's 20, 21 plus x, I want to subtract by 20, 21. That's going to give me x by itself on the left-hand side of the equation because 20, 21 minus 20, 21 is just going to be zero. But whatever I do to one side, I also have to do it to the other side as well. Okay, so I have to do it to this side over here. And if I put this in my calculator, I see that the correct answer here is 91. So C is the right answer, all right? And let me put the written solution up here. I recommend you take your time, pause the video, take all the time you need to study this because this is quite complex. What is the surface area of a cylinder with a diameter of 22 centimeters and a height of 50 centimeters? Is it A, B, C, D, or E? So let's have you pause the video, give this one a shot, and when you're ready, we'll go over how to do it. And one thing I should note, I'm giving you the formula right here. It's surface area equals two pi r h plus two pi r squared. Uh, you'll have to look that up on the formula sheet on your test, but I'm just giving it to you right now for the sake of time. So let's have you try this out, and then when you're ready, we'll go over how to do it. Okay, so basically here, the first thing I want you to see here is this word diameter. Now, when you have a circle, okay, the diameter is half of a circle. So if I just measure halfway across the circle, or I'm sorry, this is the radius. The radius is halfway across the circle. The diameter is the full way across the circle. Now this looks more like a pear or an apple or something, but hopefully you get my point. So the point is this diameter of 22 centimeters, we want to cut that in half. And we want to say that the radius equals 11 because the radius is half of the diameter. So now pretty much all I'm going to do is I'm just going to calculate this by plugging the numbers in, except in for R in the formula, I'm going to put in 11. All right, so really the only trick here is you have to know first before you can even do the question that the you have to cut this diameter in half and then you can plug that value in for R. The reason is because the diameter is twice the radius and the radius is half of the diameter. All right, so other than that, we're just going to substitute these values in here. And here we've got R squared. We know that R is 11, so I can put 11 squared. And so basically, if you do this calculation and you work this out with your calculator or however you want to do it, you'll see that A is the right answer. And I know that some people might be noticing here, they left pi in the answer choice. Will that be the case on my test? The answer is it depends. They might just leave pi like it is on the answer choice, or they could also make you multiply by 3.14. So the number pi, it's just a number that's approximately equal to 3.14. Now it's not actually 3.14, but just remember for the point of your test that pi is approximately equal to 3.14. So if they don't leave it like this on your test, then you would have to do the calculation and just in place of pi, you'd have to calculate 3.14. Hopefully that makes sense. So I actually don't have a written solution for this question. So we'll go right on to the next one. So if you struggled with the champion's challenge question a few problems ago, now's your shot at redemption. And if you get this one wrong, by all means, don't worry. Um, but this question is similar to the one we just did. Um, I think it's a little bit easier, but like I said, there's no pressure here. It's all about the learning. It's all about that knowledge. So let me turn this over to you to pause the video if you'd like to. Give this one a shot and let's just see how it goes. No pressure to get it right. Okay, so let's go over how to do this question here. So basically, the way that you want to really kind of think about this question is think about how would I calculate the mean here? And the mean just simply means the average. And so the way you calculate the average is you add up all of the numbers in the data set and you would then have to divide by the total number of numbers in our data set. Okay, so in this case though, it's a little bit different because here they've already given us the mean. All right, so we already know that the mean here is equal to 10. All right. And we know that there are one, two, three, four, five, six numbers in the data set here. So if I was going to calculate the mean, I'd have to divide by six. But what we really want is the value of this x right here. Okay. So what I want to do first here is I'm going to add up all the numbers that I can in the parentheses here. So what I mean is we're, let's do 11 plus 22 plus 7 plus 6 plus 5. So I plug that in my calculator and I rewrite this whole thing. Now I have 10 equals 51 plus x. Okay, all divided by 6. 
So now the next step that I'm going to make is I'm going to multiply by 6 on both sides of the equation. And the reason why I'm doing this is because the 6s will cancel out here. So I rewrite this. This is going to be 60 equals 51 plus x. So to get this x now, I want to subtract by 51 on both sides of my equation here. Okay, so what is 60 minus 51? 60 minus 51 is 9. D is the correct answer here. So let me show the written solution up here on the screen. So I'm putting up the written solution. You can take your time with this.